Welcome to another Build Day TV episode, carrying on our series of looking at the Oracle solution for VMware. And of course, as always, joining me is the man with the hands on the keyboard, uh, Tom Green. How are you doing today, Tom? I'm doing fantastic. Yourself? I'm pretty good. The sun's shining. Uh, we've got forecast rain for later today, so uh, hopefully that'll hold off until we're finished uh, making this video at least, and I can get outside and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, it rains every day here, so... Uh, so in this series, we've been looking at the Oracle VMware solution, uh, getting it, connecting it up, setting it up, connecting it to your on-premises environment, connecting management and deploying some workloads. Uh, but that's all really good stuff when things go right. But today, Tom, we're looking at when things go wrong. Yeah, so um, VMware has high availability and as a feature. It's been a feature for a very long time. And it's front and center in the uh, in the Oracle stack. We, we're going to go in today, we're going to test it, we're going to cause a purple screen and see what happens. Cool, all right. Let's head in and see what have we got to start with. We've got uh, plenty of virtual machines sitting around on our vSphere host to start. Right, yeah, so we have a lot of VDI that is uh, spread among the different hosts. I've already chosen this uh, 10.225.0.3 as the victim. And the reason I chose it is because our view connection server lives on that. Uh, so it's something that we're going to be able to easily track. And it's not as obfuscated as a, uh, a VDI name, we'll say. But it sure. also, um, you will be able to easily count that all of these virtual machines, uh, of them, there will be three that move, most likely. Uh, we'll be able to track those and be able to see that they do start up correctly. Because this was all deployed for us automatically, it's it's, it's all nicely configured for HA. So there's um, vSAN data store that's shared. There's NSX networking that's consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any other things we needed to do to this deployed cluster to make it ready to, to behave as a normal vSphere HA cluster? By default, it came configured for that, but I did want to go and check on the cluster settings configured you know in vSphere 6.7 U3. So under the configure and availability, you know, here is vSphere HA is turned on. So we know that that's gonna work. Um, we have the typical restart the VMs if a host fails. So okay. I believe through the settings we're ready to purple screen a, a host. Okay, so how are you going to go about actually causing a purple screen? Because that's not been a particularly common behavior recently and certainly not something you would normally want to create. Right, so there is a command that a person can run if they so chose, which this would probably be the only reason I could think that you would choose, that will cause a kernel panic and cause the machine to become unresponsive. So we're going to run that command through the SSH console. We're going to be able to SSH into this host in Oracle. Because we have root, we can actually do this. And we're going to run the command to kill the processes and let's see what happens whenever the host crashes. So this ability to use SSH into the actual SXI host on the, this cloud-hosted vSphere is unusual. This isn't something you've you played with the other um, vSphere on X cloud, or at least some of them. And uh, this isn't normal, is it, the ability to actually SSH into the host? No. So with um, Oracle, you basically have full control over all of the components of the SDDC stack after it's been deployed. They'll deploy it for you and it's all automated. It comes up in a few hours and then you can go do whatever you want. With some of the competing competitors' products, it is more hands-off for the, the deep administration tasks. Uh, you can't root to SSH into a host. You can't control all of the administrative functions or even take snapshots of some of the uh, management appliances. So uh, with Oracle, with what we're doing here, we're, it's unique to be able to test to be able to SSH into one of the hosts. Okay, why don't you hit in and, and get that started? And we'll, we might talk some more about that, that uniqueness. To get started, we're going to open up PuTTY. So we have our PuTTY configuration. We're going, as I said, we've chosen uh, 10.255.0.3 as our victim. So whenever you're uh, SSHing into an Oracle host, there's a unique mechanism that you know, before playing with Oracle, I had never seen before. And it's a SSH key is required to, uh, to get into it. So you have to have the authentication key that you created way back whenever you first set up your host. 
and I'd never logged into an ESXi host without using a username password. So, so that's kind of unique, and we're going to walk through how to do that with Putty right now as kind of the first real step. So get started, your host name that they give you is OPC at the IP address. There's also DNS resolution if we wanted to do a host name, but it's my IP here, so it's a little easier to see. Uh, just to check, my font is going to be at 20, so it should be legible. So uh, it's, always, it's always good to check whenever you're trying to show, to show with that so nobody has to squint. Uh, the, the place where you go to add the, the authentication key is in SSH and then auth. This is where it gets tricky and where if you're, you're trying to do this, you can click through a lot of different settings before you find it. So we have a private key that was generated. I think we generated it back in uh, video one or two of the series. And we saved it out to a folder on our desktop. So we yeah, just we, you did that as part of the process of deploying this cluster in the first place was this pre-shared key, which is uh, an RSA key pair. Uh, this is not unusual for connecting to uh, SSH connections into public cloud, not using a well-known username and password, actually not allowing username-based uh, authentication, requiring pre-shared keys. This, uh, this is something I do routinely with other cloud platforms. Yeah, so if you're using you know, another cloud platform and you're getting into SSH into a Linux machine, for example, yeah, but uh, using it to try to get into a ESXi host, it's... Is a is a no, a new experience for yeah for me. So we should be set to go. And look, we said okay, and it we're in. We have root to that uh, that host. So at this point, we just need to find our command. I'm gonna look off screen here for a second. And we found that with a quick Google search to uh, to find the the documentation for this. It's a reasonably public information. The I'll bring up the link here so that we can uh, can reference that. So on IT today, what ESXi command will create a kernel panic and result in a PSOD or purple screen of death? This is at VSISH and a lot of extra stuff in between. We'll look at it here, running a script that's called crash me slash panic. And are we ready to run crash me slash panic right now? I figure so. Yeah. So we'll just keep our eye on the 0.3 host. And of course, we won't see a response back in that putty session because the uh, the host it was running on just crashed. Yeah, we just and for that putty session will eventually just time out. Yeah, it'll it'll disconnect. All of a sudden, we start seeing oh, some, yeah. some stuff Suddenly popping up. Warnings. Oh, and the the host fell out. There, HA status. Let's watch the VMs on this host. It says that they're still running, so it has it's noticed a failure, but it hasn't started the machines over yet. Still waiting for the timeout of all of the heartbeats. So while that is crashing, we're now panicking. We've probably had some alerting going off saying that there's a host has failed. With HA, it'll all come back up, and there probably won't be any huge impact to production. But the question is, that I had after I did this is, how do I fix it? So, so that's the point where we need to... There we go, some VMs yeah. moving now. Yeah, we've got some VMs going. This one's going to be next. I don't think the NSX, yeah, there it goes. Host is non-responsive. It was this one, right? This one was the one that we wanted to keep our eye on. It still says it's on host three, so it'll come up onto a new host in a, in a minute or two. And of course, because we're watching, the uh, seconds to minutes seem to take a lot longer. Right, yeah. This is probably the point at which, if you were on call, you would start to get the first page for something going wrong. Yeah. And uh, if it happened at 2 a.m., you'd just be starting to wake up. Yeah, and if it was your only connection server for view, you would ha might have some upset users. While that's going on, we're going to go over to the Oracle uh, console here because, as you said, you're a administrator. You just woke up. You're groggy. You see that there's something failed. You're going to go see why. So to find the physical host in Oracle, instead of going to the VMware SDDC, we actually go into compute and to instances because these are bare metal instances in your Oracle cloud. So we're going, the state is still running because even though it's a kernel panic, there's still power and such to the machine. That is not the right one. The naming conventions are a little, there it is. Important to note, if you're doing this test, make sure you have the right IP address before you go and do what I'm about to do. Uh, the proper way to restore the host is to reboot it. When you do this, it'll actually do a full power cycle on the host, and it takes about uh, 20 to 30 minutes for it to, to do a full reboot. 
So we're about to do that now. It asked if we want to reboot. We just hit yes. And it's going through stopping and starting the host. And now our connection server's on the other host. It's come up yep. on dot two. Yeah, while that's going on, our connection server rebooted and it's all it's all well and good and happy. So it's a little anticlimactic that HA works on on um, Oracle vSphere solution just as as well as it does on premises. Yeah, it's yeah, there's not a whole lot to to see. It's very anticlimactic to watch in a in a video like this, but it's pretty climactic and dramatic whenever you have a host that goes down. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, going back to when HA was new when I started with with vSphere and it was uh, well, virtual infrastructure three was where we got HA and it, it was absolutely revolutionary and awesome and it, it took away all those risks around uh, consolidating lots of virtual machines onto physical hosts. But yeah. you know, that was even older than that 2011 article from Greg Shields. Yeah, uh, thank you, Greg Shields. You've given a lot to the community over the years. He has, and uh, he actually was the first person who referred me to a writing a gig with Tech Target. So I have him to thank for my uh, something around eight years of writing for Tech Target. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty great. So we're on the that connection server. It's come back up. We can access it. It's all. Yeah, it's all well and good. So we've we've got that going, and now we play the the waiting game. But luckily, what was that? Maybe five minutes of downtime between entering the command and the machines all being back, turned back on. Yeah, and that, that time will be dependent on the usual vSphere HA kind of constraints of uh, concurrent power on, on a VM, so the number of VMs you have and the number of hosts you're powering them onto. Yeah, but using vSAN, and not, it's an NVMe vSAN, it's going to be uh, able to, to handle a boot storm if you have hundreds of VMs that have to come up or whatever. Yeah, if this was a fully deployed out VDI cluster and we we're running 100, 150 VMs per host, uh, then yeah, that would uh, there'd be a lot of VMs, a lot of churn going on at this point. All right, and uh, last time you did this, you said it was about twenty minutes or so before that host came back after the reboot. Yep, yeah, it's about twenty to thirty minutes before it came back. Uh, it was all fully added back into the cluster. All right, well, I don't think we should have have to find folks uh, watching uh, stay with us for the, those twenty minutes. So. Uh, I think we'll get Jeffrey to do some magic editing and we'll just show you that that came back successfully afterwards. And uh, just zoom, we'll go through time. Ta-da, time passes. And magically, that uh, host has, seems to have come back and we, we have a healthy cluster in that uh, switch in time. We went from having lots of reds and ambers to having everything looking healthy. What have we got, Jeff? Uh, hang on, Tom, Tom. Yeah. What have we got, Tom? Uh, well, we have a healthy cluster just like you said the host came back up it's it's been up for 11 minutes at this point it took maybe 30 minutes or so to go from running that script to kill the host and to having a healthy happy cluster and it even has it has its machines for instant clones and nsx on it uh, so nothing migrated over because we have plenty of space um capacity on the other hosts however if, if we were running you tied on capacity, DRS would have moved workload back onto this host. And so whenever we went over into the Oracle console during that, as you remember, when I hit reboot, it went to a stopping state. I'm uh, going into compute and instances to to check the state on that now, which it, it's really kind of neat that in compute instance, you know, they consider a bare metal host for VMware that instead of you know VMware host having something separate. It's just another instance that shows up with my Windows virtual machines that are are deployed in there. It's kind of a bit of, it messes with your head just a little bit that there is this infrastructure that you're running VMs on that sits alongside what are essentially VMs. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that will be interesting as you go more and more hybrid and you use more of the native instances alongside your vSphere environment. So you can see it's running, uh, everything is healthy here. There's no alerts, there's no warnings and our console is clean. So we had an HA incident and the the recovery time for the bare metal host from reboot to come to getting back in the cluster was 30 minutes, like I said. And that will be fairly normal for a physical host with 768 gigs of memory coming up and then vCenter taking its time to decide that, that the host was actually healthy and readmit it. So but doesn't seem there's anything, any kind of delay there that you wouldn't have with an equivalent hardware configuration on premises. 
Yep, no, it, it just worked just like it was on premises. You had negotiating the vSAN, getting that uh, policy all protected and everything takes a little bit of extra time too, but you know, it's very similar to if I ran the same script in the data center, uh, we would have about that long of wait. And that kind of feels like the summary of, of what we get here is that, that nothing is different from having vSphere in your own data center. You don't have to treat this as an exception to all of your other processes. Even if you're using really legacy processes that require you to SSH connect, I guess that that change to appreciate key from using username, password or authentication will be about the only thing I could see in there that was different to having the same cluster on premises. Yeah, there's very little uh, cloud stuff on top of it, really. It, it feels just like my scripts or anything that I would, would bring into it would work. All right. Well, uh, that seems to be us for demonstrating vSphere HA on the Oracle VMware. Uh, Oracle Cloud VMware solution, OCVS. Uh, thank you very much, Tom, for walking us through all of those processes. My pleasure.